Infinite 3 started in uh, 1996. I had returned from a trip in New Orleans and I was really excited about R&B saxophone playing. Previous to that I had been playing more jazz music and um, I definitely had fallen in love at that point with the Hammond organ and all the guys that were making those great records at the time like Jimmy Smith and Jack McDuff. I met Adam Scone after lots of inquiries of who is the greasiest organ player in New York City. This, is, this was a young man who was way ahead of his age in his ability to play incredible bass lines and scream him and organ, you know, make the instrument sound how it's supposed to be sound. And Rudy Albin, I was really fortunate to meet him. He was one of the greatest drummers I'd played with up to that point. And, um, his big recommendation to me was the fact that he had played with Jack McDuff for years and when we started playing that was a big sort of pillar of what we were doing. Soul Donkey was a real exciting record for me because uh, it's when, you know, we'd cut Sugar's Boogaloo, we'd done a bunch of touring and that was really the record for me that defined the Sugarman 3. We would kind of pulled all the stops out um, and really made what you know what I wanted to do, which is a, a real raw Hammond organ soul jazz record. One member, Coleman Mellet, who was the guitar player who joined us, and uh, you know, he's tearing it up on, on Soul Donkey. Really, you know, he he passed away a couple of years ago, and you know it's hard to to listen to that record and not hear. The, you know how what an incredible young musician he was, and how much more great music he had to play. Hurricane yeah, was the first record that we did for Daptone, and at this time, um, the band was changing, and uh, I was we, we we decided at that point to use a bunch of guest vocalists. Charles Bradley's first debut was on that record. Naomi Shelton. Lee Fields, all these artists which ended up becoming real important Daptone roster artists. Wow, we'd been running the record label for about 10 years and there hadn't been another Sugarman 3 record in about 10 years. In the meantime, obviously I was super busy with Sharon Jones and the Dap King. I had started to get the itch to really want to just do a Sugarman 3 record again. I had been in touch with Adam Scone. We had done a couple of writing section, uh, sessions, which were really exciting. I mean, we're really on the same page and um, we're coming up with some nice tunes. We decided to block out four days at the Daptone studio and uh, bring all the guys in. And really, there was no expectations. If we were to get a good record, that would be great. If we didn't, we were going to have a lot of fun trying. And um, we'll announce probably the best Sugarman 3 record to date. 